this is Digital by Computing. So today we are here at uh, Cisco Live and we're just going to briefly talk about the differences between a managed and an unmanaged switch. So here is some example of what a switch looks like. So a switch is essentially a device where a number of computers, servers and other systems are essentially going to be plugging into uh, to get themselves onto their network. So you see you've got multiple ports, they're called RJ45 ports, they're Ethernet ports and they essentially will have a device running into one of these ports via a standard Ethernet cable and then you get authentic, you know, essentially authenticated onto the network. So we've got ourselves a unmanaged and a managed switch. An unmanaged switch essentially is what's called a dumb switch. An unmanaged switch is a device that uh, really doesn't have too many brains behind it. If you have a computer, a PC, you run that into the board itself and you get yourself a IP address on the network and you're good to go. You can't really control what the individual ports on a unmanaged switch do. You don't have any more. You don't have things like um, you know alerting on those ports. You can't see what sort of traffic is flowing through them. Uh, you can't control what VLAN or subnet or IP range that particular port is controlling. Uh, it's really just you plug a computer in and you're good to go, right? There's no, no, nothing really more than that. Um, in a corporate world, you generally do not want to use unmanaged switches. Unmanaged switches are generally much cheaper. You use them you know, perhaps in a home environment, perhaps even in a small environment, but generally if you're gonna get anything substantial, even in a small business to medium to large, you're gonna be using managed switches. So I've got devices that are gonna be running into a managed switch, and I can actually have more control of what that switch does. I can block ports, I can control what VLAN a particular device is running into. I can put servers into one, I can put you know, de desktops into another and have them segregated. I can set it up so that if, if somebody's malicious that's trying to come into a business and they plug a device into one of these managed port switches, they will not actually get themselves a network IP address, right? They will not actually authenticate on the network. So a managed switch has a lot more control. You can actually have monitoring set up, as I said before, on a managed switch as well. So you've got monitoring software, essentially scanning your network, making sure that things are healthy on the network. If you want to track things like packets throughout a network, uh, you want to see what devices are plugging into a network. Uh, a managed switch generally gives you that. They have what's, you know, ICMP, you can have monitoring on these ports, on the switches. We can actually see the sort of traffic flowing through it. A managed switch definitely, you know, generally will not show you that. So really, that is in a nutshell the difference between a managed and an unmanaged switch. I'm going to say, if you are in a corporate environment, you never, ever, ever go for a managed switch. If you can give me a good reason why you would use a managed switch other than cost and ease of use, I would love it if you commented and let me know. But um, really, from a security standpoint, it's a no-brainer to not use a managed switch as opposed to an unmanaged switch. Unmanaged switches are dumb. They don't really know what they're doing, really. They're just going to you know, give you an IP. They're going to just give you, you know, packets. Uh, they're just going to flow traffic throughout that network. A managed switch has more control of those ports. You can see what's going on in those ports. You can see them in a monitoring system. You can control things like VLAN, subnets, what sort of groupings you have across your different sorts of devices. So that is a real quick summary. I'd love to comment if you have further things to, to add. Comment below, Give me, ask me a question, that'd be great. I'd love it also if you subscribe to Digital Bike Computing and like this video as well. And we'll talk to you next time.